Ahoy, you scurvy dogs. I'm Hippo TC, a seasoned scallywag with over 10,000 hours of plundering, thieving, and surviving on the Sea of Thieves. If there's one thing I've learned in my countless adventures, it's how to navigate the treacherous waters of PvP and live to tell the tale. In this video, let's dive into some of the absolute best PvP tips and tricks that will help you stay afloat and stay alive in the high seas of Sea of Thieves. Also, if you watch to the very end of this video, I will also have some bonus PvP tips and just some general knowledge for you out there. First, let's talk about self-defense strategies. Never let a scurvy dog set foot on your ship. This is probably one of the most important self-defense tips I can possibly give you. Once a pirate gets on your ship, you are at a disadvantage. Now let's talk about the best ways to keep a pirate off your ship. First, let's talk about the most feared weapon that every boarder hates to be greeted with when climbing up a ladder, the blunderbuss. Yes, that is right. One of the easiest and best ways to defend your ship is with the blunderbuss. Equip it and guard the ladder like a true pirate. Laugh in the face of salty insults as you send boarders to Davy Jones' locker. Me included, because normally when I die boarding a ship, it's because the blunderbuss. The best time to shoot a pirate is when they are in the animation from ladder to deck. This almost guarantees a one-shot of your enemy sending them to the ferry. Other methods you can use to defend against boarders are blunder bombs, which in my opinion work even better than the blunderbuss. The moment you hear a boarder grab the ladder, just chuck a blunder bomb on that side of the ship and you are good to go. However, if you want to get really stylish, you can go for a jumping lunge. This by far is my personal favorite as it is the most stylish of ways to get rid of a border. That being said, there are a few other ways to guard your ship, but these, if used properly, should cover the majority of situations for you. Hey, if you're killing those stuff, how about that? Stop running. running. No. Please. Please. Now let's talk about strategic return fire. One of the biggest questions I get when I engage in PvP is why I don't go down below to repair my holes right away. The reason? Well, this is a perfect time to engage in strategic counterattacks even when the pressure is high you are gonna to wanna to target the enemy's cannon line to disrupt their plans of attacking you. A well-placed cannonball can turn the tide of any battle, especially if you're able to hit your enemy in the face with a cannonball. If this happens, quickly use your chain shots to knock the mass down and get yourself in a perfect death spiral and really put the pressure on them. Also, something that you're gonna to wanna to consider is if you are unable to keep them off the cannon line and your ships are close enough, another great strategy is to jump over to the harpoon and harpoon their cannoneer over to your ship, knocking them off their cannons and giving you a slight advantage. This works extremely well, even against really good players. Most of the time, they're not prepared for the moment, especially if you catch them off guard. Another thing you're gonna wanna keep in mind is dodging those cannonballs. You're gonna to wanna to master the art of dodging incoming cannonballs. Swiftly maneuver to avoid these deadly shots. A nimble pirate is a surviving pirate. Although even the best pirates may still get hit in the face from time to time. One of the best things to do is move to the left or move to the right, obviously, but especially if you're on the sloop, something that you can do is take a step back and move behind the, the mast. That will give you a little bit of coverage even if they hit right on the mast. Another thing to keep in mind is you're gonna wanna keep a steady hand and prioritize repairs wisely. Not every hole spells doom, so focus on plugging the largest ones first. This buys you plenty of time for essential ship maintenance. Always focus on tier three holes first as they will be able to first send your ships to the depths. Additionally, if you end up getting into a tough spot with your mast down, repair opposite the side the enemy pirates are shooting. This will allow you to repair the holes and not get knocked off. With all these things in mind, you're always gonna wanna make sure your pirate is equipped with everything a pirate may need in the face of PvP. Cannonballs, chain shots, blunder bombs, food, wood, and of course, bait. For more on the secret food of Sea of Thieves, check out my video here where I cover it in depth. Either way, don't forget to fill your belly. 
Maintain full health by munching on food during the heat of battle. A well-fed pirate is a resilient one. Here are a few things of general pirate wisdom that I have learned from my failures and my losses. Something I always say is there are two types of really good players. There are the players that are mechanically amazing at the game. They have all of the right movement and they can really hit their shots from distance. But then there's also the pirates that are very crafty and that is the type of pirate that I like to be. I like to be the kind of pirate that uses my environment and get creative in my moments, especially traps and just thinking outside of the box as seen in this clip. Why don't you go sell? Why don't you go sell? I got an idea, a plan, a plan of action. Works. That's amazing! Oh my gosh, dude, it worked! <laughs> Let's talk risk management. This is a pirate game, meaning every person you meet out there on the seas is probably going to lie, cheat, or otherwise do everything they can to win, which means when proposing peace, always have an escape plan. Don't risk all your booty in one go. Stay cunning and make it difficult for potential threats to seize your hard earned loot. A common mistake I see is newer pirates not taking the time to sell their loot often. Another thing to keep in mind is you want to avoid broadcasting vulnerability. Skip the common signals like white flags and musical distractions. Project confidence, whether it's real or just a savvy facade. Make sure your boat doesn't have certain swabby cosmetics, things like the nightshine parrot or crab cosmetics. These are telltale signs to a seasoned pirate that you are new. Also, do not park your boat in a fashion that makes you look like you are new. Always park your boat parallel with the island, sails up, and anchor up. One of the easiest giveaways to you being a new pirate is you are parked at an island with your sails down and your anchor down. So always make sure your ship is ready to go. Now, sometimes you're gonna have to cut your losses. This is true for any pirate. If the wind turns foul and a fight's not in your favor, you gotta cut your losses. Don't be a victim of the sunk cost fallacy. Strip sell valuables at outposts and make strategic decisions to keep the wind in your sails. Remember, take what you can and give nothing back. Sometimes you gotta run away to live and fight another day. However, once you do get that treasure sold, turn around and give your chasers a fight which will only lead to growing as a pirate and becoming more deadly with each win and loss. Here are a few bonus tips. You can refill your ammo for any weapon at an armory. All you have to do is select a different skin. So if you ever find yourself in an outpost trying to defend yourself and you run out of ammo, use this tip. Organize your barrels. Each crew does it a bit differently. This also includes making sure that you have storage crates, cannonball crates, and wood crates kind of around your ship where you and your crew like them. Like I said, each crew is different, so I'm gonna let you decide what this looks like, but knowing where things are without having to look through the barrels makes a big difference. Not all food is created equal. Know what food to look for. I've created these graphs for easy reference, and you can find them in the description below. Use firebombs to distract and annoy the enemy. At the end of the day, firebombs don't deal a massive amount of damage, but they can cause some major distraction and annoyance for the enemy. Speaking of fire, you can keep a small layer of water on the bottom of your ship. This will prevent fire from catching below deck, giving you a safe place during a fight to catch your breath. Practice boarding by lunging off the front of your ship and trying to catch your ladder. This gets you familiar with how boarding other ships works and it's fun to do when you are bored speaking of boarding listen for mermaids this sound will alert you to guard your ladder always lunge by blocking first this gives you added movement speed when lunging and if you time it right you can even do a jumping sword lunge i do this all of the time speaking of lunges if you are on a ship you can cancel a lunge by grabbing the helm cannon, or anchor, pretty much anything you can get your hands on. This can help save you in a pinch, especially if you know you're going to miss your enemy and don't want to get caught with your pants down, figuratively speaking, of course. Another thing with the lunge is you can lunge back to back and kill your enemies, including PvE. 
even though there is a penalty if you miss it, if you manage to hit your target, you can still do the double lunge technique. You can do this by quickly blocking after you hit your target, jumping, and lunging again. This is also a great way to clear out skellies. Love the cutlass? Well, learn how to quickly move using the block jump in any direction. Combine this with a regular jump right after you quick jump, and you, my friend, are bunny hopping. This is a very useful technique, especially on ships. One of the most important things that you can do while being on a ship fighting other players is staying nimble. If you can have really good movement on a boat, you will stay alive. So the cutlass really helps with this. At the time of this recording, this is currently still in the game. I don't know if this is going to get patched out eventually, but you can currently grab the ladder from inside the sloop which if you are trapped down below deck because pirates have taken over your helm, you can use this trick to sneak attack and surprise them. Know your weapons. Each weapon is unique and offers unique damage. You can also find this graph for easy reference in the description below. Practice shooting the bell on your ship. This is a great way to warm up your shots and this is especially helpful if you're running a double gun combo. I still do this to this day. And last but not least, check for tuckers constantly. Every time you leave your ship, you check for tuckers constantly. Every time you leave your ship and you get back to it, do a quick check for tuckers. I have a full guide on how to tuck, which covers all the best hiding spots a filthy tucker might try to use. If you're still looking for some tips or have some questions, feel free to join my Discord. If you are not sure what Discord is, it's a free online tool designed to bring gamers together. I promise if you're sailing alone or doing an open crew, well, Lord forbid, do yourself a favor and join my community by clicking the link in the description. Don't sail alone if you don't have to. All of this being said, there's a lot we got to cover and I plan to make a few more guide videos around PvP. I'm going to focus in on porting, uh, cannoneering, and some other kind of like hot topics. So I really hope you guys enjoy that. Now, all that being said, embark on your own Sea of Thieves journey armed with these tips and may the winds of fortune be forever in your favor. Sail forth, Muhardis, and remember, take what you can and never trust another pirate.